Hello everyone and welcome back to another mini tutorial session here on Procreate and for this video guys I want to show you the top five ways that I believe you can fill colors in your illustrations in Procreate. So the way that I'm going to show you guys here I'm going to show you five different ways maybe some of these ways you know some of these ways you may not know of you may be using for most of your color fills one of the ways that I'm going to show you in this video so I've decided to categorize from the slowest way to the fastest way as what I believe is to fill colors in your illustration. So make sure to pay attention to all the different ways. Some of these ways may actually be really helpful for you. Now just bear in mind, just one note, that from, for some of the fastest ways, it does require you to have an outline layer in your illustration to make that happen. So now without any further ado, let's get started. So in number five, it's actually, as we know, filling up with uh, a studio pen and literally painting on a new layer. As you can see, you definitely wanna use a, an increased brush size and you wanna start painting, but there are several things here on why I already, you know, right from the get-go, I can say that this is not the fastest way to fill colors in your illustrations. Number one, as you paint, you may be leaving like a lot of little gaps. And with that, you gotta go in. And if you didn't want the ears of this character to have the same color, you would be just using an eraser tool and uh, you would be back and forth like painting and erasing. So if I go like this, I've made a mistake. So now I gotta go in the erase tool, make sure that I've got the proper size that I need and paint that off. Now, this is a very relaxing way of painting. And of course, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be painting this way, but if I wanna fill in all this section here of the face and the neck of the character with this color, that will definitely take a while, as you can see here. So if you are indeed painting this way, at least do yourself a favor here and on the brush size, I'm just gonna bring all the way almost to the maximum and make sure to tap the little plus icon that's right here on the brush um, you know, preview, and that's gonna give you a few options for brush sizes. So with this, even though you're painting in a very manual way, you can at least swap very quickly between brush sizes and just reach a bigger brush size in order for you to uh, complete the task this way. Now, as you can see, this is clearly not the fastest way, so I'm just gonna go back in the layers panel, clear this layer, and let's talk about number Four. So in number four, we have painting in alpha lock mode. So the reason why this is really cool, it does have a big requirement, and that's why I'm already setting this as number four, because you will need a base shape with your painting, with the area that you need to cover already made for you to use alpha lock. So right there, you need to spend time filling up that layer so that you can take advantage of alpha lock. What is alpha lock, painting in alpha lock? It's basically tapping on our desired layer and then we're going to select alpha lock and you see that the boundaries just around of every side and every corner of the layer you've selected you see the little checkers uh, pattern very famous very common as well in other softwares such as photoshop that is telling us now procreate is telling us now that we can paint any color anything that we want to on that layer so I could come here and start painting some shadows on our character, sort of hitting the right or left side of the face, depending how you're facing. And I'm just gonna do this just as a quick example. And here we go, we got some shadows over here. The problem with painting in this mode is that is the most destructive way of painting colors in your illustration with alpha lock, because everything is blending, is sticking into one layer. And if I were to just step in gallery and step out here, I uh, back into the gallery section, I would be saving everything into one layer. There will be no more undos. There'll be no ways of changing things once I'm just merging everything into one layer. I actually highly recommend you guys to not be using too much of alpha lock unless you're really doing personal work that you don't feel like you're gonna be changing, you know, in the near future even. So I'm just going to undo this and um, I do think that is a very powerful tool, don't get me wrong, the fact that you can paint as I can do here without really worrying about the boundaries of an image, you know, stepping out of the boundaries of our base layer is super powerful, 
but just know that it comes with a huge disadvantage that everything is then blended into one layer. But in any case, this was number four. Now for number three, we're gonna be looking at painting with a selection fill. So I'm just gonna turn off off lock right here. I'm going to go back to our new layer and now I'm going to use our selection tool and just leave it on freehand. I'm also going to turn off our skin layer and I wanna make sure that I have the, the color that I needed before, new layer and selection tool. So here you can just draw, this is a very famous way that there's a lot of illustrators that love to paint with a freehand tool. And as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just creating a selection of what I need. And as long as I have the add pre-selected right here, I'm just adding more selections to my current selection. Because as you can see, I don't have like all of the little corners of the year that I need to fill with my colors. So I'm just gonna do this, for example, go right here, close this mask. Now, I, I actually have all this part also selected, selected, so I wanna make sure that my hair layer is sitting on top of this skin layer. So that I have the hierarchy of layers correct, so that colors aren't leaking on top of others. So I'm making another quick mask here. So as you can see, it is faster, there's definitely a little bit of labor here in order to get things going. But once you have a selection, I'm not gonna do the whole face and neck, but just so you can see, I tap back into the layers panel, tap on my layer and select fill layer. So this method is really good. I actually do like selecting with freehand tool because it's fast, it's very organic, it follows you know, your hand and the brush, brush strokes of your hand. But one of the things that is not really optimal is in this example, I actually have some very thin outlines. So this method of using, of painting with selection and then tapping on layers and selecting fill, it really works, especially if you have thicker outlines in your illustration. So it's gonna be way easier to make those selections of not having to be so precious and then hitting the right selection you need and be able to drop that color or tapping on layer and selecting fill. Now, going to number two, I actually really like color dragging and if you know this channel you know that I talk a lot about color dragging so how do we do that how do we uh, you know activate this option of color dragging so for that um, and I'm listing this as number two because this will still require you to have a base layer but we have all of these layers right here you know we got the hair layer the skin layer so let's just stay in the skin layer now if I were to change this to blue and just drop this into the skin layer I quickly get a uh, change of color just by dropping these right here on the same layer of the skin. I can quickly change the colors of the skin of this character. Now, what, why is this not number one? It's because once again, we are dropping things onto existing layers and therefore we are changing something that we used to have. And if I were to save this file, the previous skin color would just be gone. There would be no way to access that unless I had that skin color saved in my colors palette. So this one is almost optimal, but it's not quite because once again, we are creating destructive work in Procreate. So now what is the top, the most uh, efficient way of painting colors or filling your illustration, especially if you have outlines in Procreate? Well, first and foremost, let's go find your outline layer, which is right here at the top. Now this option is really, really important and it's called reference. So when you set this, I'm just going to turn off and then I'm gonna tap again on my line work or outline layer, set this as reference. I am telling Procreate that my outline layer or this layer right here holds all the information, all the masks and all the sections that I need in order to change colors in my illustration. They are holding the boundaries. So the beauty of this is that I'm just gonna close this whole group, create a new layer right here. Now, because I have reference layer, I can now drop my new color using color drag. I'm just gonna drop this onto the ears and the face of the character, just over here and the neck as well, and as well as that side of the nose. So the beauty of working this way is that this is a non-destructive way of working in Procreate, and I can now turn this on and off 
I can also tap on the uh, blend mode icon and I can change blend modes and it's actually mixing up with my existing previous layer, thus creating some new you know, possibilities and things that you may not have thought about, like you actually may want a, a bit of a bluish tone on the skin or you wanna go back to the original. This creates a lot of options and it also allows you to turn things on and off. So in my opinion, this is number one, is using reference layer. It allows you to quickly drag colors. You can quickly change things and just drag it once again. It allows you to work in a non-destructive way in Procreate, and it allows you to know and have the, the peace of mind that once you save your file and you go back to it, you still have access to turn things on and off or even change based on client feedbacks. To me, this is the most professional way of working in Procreate. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and if you did a like it would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button for more content like this, more tutorials, things that will help make you a better digital illustrator every single day. Now on the right side of the screen there's always more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.